SpaceX has revealed it's skipping the V2 booster entirely, and it's absolutely incredible. We're jumping straight from V1 to the groundbreaking V3 design, which many thought was still far off. The first V3 simulation prototype has now debuted, packed with major upgrades that mark a bold new chapter for Starship. What's changed? Let's dive into the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's safe to say that ever since Musk's announcement last year, the Starship V3, standing at an incredible 150 meters tall and packed with major upgrades, has been one of the most highly anticipated developments in the program. Most people assumed we wouldn't see this version until at least next year, but in a surprising twist, the V3 booster appears to be arriving much sooner than expected. Recent images strongly suggest that B-18, the next booster in SpaceX's production lineup, will be the first to feature the V-3 configuration. In the latest update, B-18 construction has begun, as the common dome section has been brought to Mega Bay 1 for stacking. Still, those photos alone didn't fully reveal what kinds of changes we could expect in the new version. Perhaps to answer that curiosity, SpaceX recently unveiled a new preview in the form of Test Tank 17, a prototype designed specifically to trial new features before full-scale versions are rolled out. This early look gives us our first glimpse into some of the key upgrades coming with Starship V3. Test Tank 17 first appeared on the morning of May 8th and was quickly transported to the Massey test site for evaluation. There, it was lifted into a secure test cage, though its exact testing purpose remains unclear. What grabbed the most attention, however, was its exterior design, visible during its move. For one, SpaceX has officially confirmed that this is part of the V3 series. The transport cart for the tank was labeled Booster V3 Aft Cart, and the listed weight and load capacity were 27,000 pounds, or 12.2 metric tons, and 175,000 pounds, or 79.4 metric tons, respectively. But the most striking feature, heat shield tiles mounted on the aft, or rear, section of the booster. That's right, tiles on a super heavy booster. This is surprising, as heat shield tiles were previously only associated with the ship stage, which is the second stage, or upper stage, which re-enters Earth's atmosphere from orbit. However, past missions have shown that the booster's aft section still experiences significant heating during re-entry. Combined with the intense flames and thrust from the engine section, this area endures extreme stress, almost like a burning furnace. Without proper protection, this can result in damage to engines and nearby components. For example, we saw clear damage to B-12 after landing, likely due to heat and engine stress. Situations like these highlight why full reusability hasn't yet been achieved with Super Heavy. So, in order for the system to move closer to complete reusability, improvements like these are essential, and that's exactly what the V3 aims to deliver greater durability, reliability, and long-term efficiency. Looking closely at the heat shield tiles on Test Tank 17, we can see further innovations. The tiles maintain the familiar hexagonal shape, but now each one includes two noticeable features, likely intended for mounting or reinforcement. This could be attachment points for screws or pins designed to hold each tile more securely and reduce the risk of losing them during flight. Another possibility is that these features serve as spacers, creating a slight gap between the tiles and the rocket's skin to allow for thermal insulation and expansion tolerance during high heat events. Either way, these updates mark a clear step forward in SpaceX's quest to make Starship and Super Heavy not only reusable, but routinely reusable with minimal refurbishment. This glimpse into the V3 architecture confirms that SpaceX is not just incrementally improving Starship, they're laying the foundation for a more robust, high-performance system that will eventually support missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Another standout upgrade to the Starship system is the apparent change in heat shield tile material. Unlike the traditional solid black tiles, which were likely ceramic, the new tiles on Test Tank 17 appear gray and noticeably shinier, suggesting a shift toward metallic heat shield tiles. SpaceX has hinted at this development before, even installing some of these metallic tiles on recent ships for testing. 
While those earlier flights didn't allow for full verification due to technical issues, the intent was clear. And now with Test Tank 17, it seems SpaceX is ready to push forward with this bold innovation. Why make the change to metal tiles? The benefits are substantial. Metallic tiles can withstand higher temperatures than ceramic ones and are better suited to extreme environments like atmospheric reentry. Combined with Starship's stainless steel skin, which is already far more heat resistant than materials like aluminum lithium or carbon composites, these tiles create a much more robust thermal protection system. Another advantage is their thinner profile. The tiles on Test Tank 17 appear significantly slimmer than previous versions which implies improved material strength and efficiency. A thinner tile means less weight, a critical factor in aerospace design. Reducing the mass of the heat shield system allows SpaceX to eliminate the need for the previously massive engine heat shield, simplifying the overall structure. This not only reduces weight, but also cuts down on installation complexity and future maintenance. It's likely we'll soon see these metallic tiles apply to ships, where heat shielding is even more critical. While this current system may not represent the final design, it's a major step toward a more integrated, efficient, and reusable heat shield architecture. SpaceX is expected to refine this approach further, potentially combining it with active cooling systems for added protection, especially on high-speed reentries. Beyond the heat shield, Test Tank 17 also showcases several design tweaks that hint at deeper changes beneath the surface. For example, the tank includes multiple holes and attachment points around its lower section, along with numerous hooks and mounts, possibly for lifting, structural integration, or fueling. On the upper end, there is a mysterious inverted diamond-shaped pin, whose purpose is still unclear, and a small tube head, which may serve a refueling function. Larger ports may be used for propellant loading or venting, while a few small red protrusions could be part of future instrumentation or mounting features, though they don't appear to be pins. Whether these features are unique to this test unit or will make their way into the official V3 prototypes remains to be seen. That will become clearer once we see the next full-scale booster rollout of the production site. As for testing, Test Tank 17 will be put through a rigorous evaluation process. Following its lift into the test cage at the Massey test site, it may be moved to adjacent facilities for cryogenic testing, where it's subjected to extremely cold conditions to simulate fuel loads. It may also face direct flame exposure to evaluate the performance of the new heat shield tiles under high temperature conditions. Later, Test Tank 17 could be transported to Launch Pad B to test integration with the orbital launch mount and the chopsticks system. These compatibility checks are crucial for future stacking, lifting, or potential catching operations. Beyond that, many additional tests could take place, some public, others likely behind closed doors. With so many exciting developments packed into this prototype, it's clear that SpaceX is accelerating its progress toward the next generation of Starship. Did you notice any unique details on Test Tank 17? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this update, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's incredible journey toward the future of space exploration. With Test Tank 17 now progressing through its test campaign, it's clear that SpaceX is moving full speed ahead towards Starship version 3. It all begins with B-18, or Booster 18. Back in February, SpaceX rolled a new ring stand into the Star Factory, specifically to support the forward ring flange of B-18.1. At the time, many assumed this indicated a transition to V-2, but in light of recent developments, it's more likely that B-18 will mark the official beginning of V-3. Based on current timelines, assembly may take around a month, meaning we could see the first complete V-3 booster by July. Of course, sections of the new booster may appear earlier as they're transported across the site. Looking ahead, if SpaceX maintains its current launch cadence of one flight every one to two months, we could see the first V-3 flight likely featuring B-18 and ship V-3 as early as Flight 13, possibly in the final two months of 2025. If that schedule holds, V-3's official debut will come before the year ends, laying the groundwork for accelerated V-3 launches in 2026.
This transition to V3 carries enormous significance for the future of Starship. As Musk previously revealed, Starship V3 will be massive, up to 150 meters tall, marking it as the largest version to date. This increase in size allows for more propellant storage, which is crucial to support the upgraded Raptor 3 engines, a new iteration focused on being more powerful, efficient, and reliable. Additionally, the payload capacity is expected to exceed 200 metric tons, a huge leap that will transform SpaceX's capabilities in orbital and interplanetary missions. V3 also represents a shift in reliability and reuse. As seen in Test Tank 17, SpaceX is introducing multiple protective upgrades. A metallic heat shield, possibly changes in hot staging, redesigned grid fins for super heavy, repositioned and reshaped forward flaps, and general structural reinforcements. All of these enhancements aim to increase durability and reduce refurbishment time, pushing SpaceX closer to full reusability. These advances will be critical as SpaceX begins construction of the orbital refilling system, which is expected to rely on the larger V3 platform. If V3 is ready by late 2025, that infrastructure build-out could begin as the first or second quarter of 2026. Beyond refueling, V3 will also serve as the foundation for crewed exploration variants. The Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, for NASA's Artemis program, designed specifically for lunar surface missions, will build on V3 architecture with major modifications to both its interior and exterior. This version is expected to appear by early to mid-2026 in preparation for an uncrewed landing demo in late 2026 followed by a crewed lunar landing in 2027. Looking even further ahead, V3 may unlock entirely new roles for Starship, like point-to-point -point cargo transport on Earth, acting as a space station platform, or serving as the first permanent habitat on the Moon or Mars. We're witnessing the dawn of a new Starship era, an era defined by the largest, most powerful, and most reliable rocket ever built. And it all starts here with Test Tank 17, a transitional prototype ushering in the next chapter. As we wait to see its performance in upcoming tests, we also await the challenges and breakthroughs that will come with the first official V3 prototype. Overcoming those milestones will be what finally launches Starship into its historic role in humanity's future among the stars. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.